Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper here at the uh, park de Vaugrenier. Remember when I made a video about a 6 meter half wave unfed uh, antenna with uh, transformers that I was going to use for my PRC351. So the transformer was going to go into this box here and I'll have a whip antenna uh, bolted on. So. Uh, you know easy to carry uh, easy to uh, transport around so that was the goal of the experiment but you also remember that I built a uh, field strength meter and like a dummy that I was I filled it with epoxy <laughs> and uh, you know the result uh, I ended up with a brick um, this one though works and that's number two so now I can test those two transformers so I have a 49 to 1 with a uh, I think it's an FT 140-61 so 61 material presumably better for uh, VHF than 43 and I have the classic oh no that's the other one what am I saying that's the 49 to 1 with the 61 material and that's a 16 to 1 with two turns primary uh, on 43 material so the question is which one works best and the only way to you know find that out uh, because of course SWR uh, measurements don't tell you uh, the whole story uh, you can have very very low SWR but you're not you know radiating much of anything so uh, you know a resistor <laughs> 50 ohm uh, has a very low SWR it doesn't radiate much so the only way to know is to use a field strength meter and that's what I'm going to do today I'm going to start by uh, testing the 49 to 1 on 61 material core and uh, we'll see if that works all right so I have my uh, field strength meter here and unfortunately when I transmit uh, I don't see the needle moving Foxtrot for whiskey Bravo Yankee tester Absolutely nothing. That's using the uh, little antenna from my uh, Yesu VX6, so uh, very small. It doesn't detect anything. Now I'm going to use a low slung dipole. Now you probably can't see it. You might see the coax at the center of the image here. Uh, that should work. Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo, Yankee, test, test. And it works. Uh, okay, not very high, but enough to make a measurement now uh, let's switch antennas and see if we can get a better signal maybe all right so now i have the uh, 16 to 1 with the uh, 43 material let's try that foxtrot for whiskey bravo yankee test needle is barely moving so uh, that's uh, that one loses 49 to 1 uh, wins I was expecting the 49 to 1 transformer to win, I have to say. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, well, you know, I'm sure the 16 to 1 works also, but uh, I just want to uh, find uh, one transformer that works for me and uh, 49 to 1 works. I know I've used 49 to 1s on 6 meters before and I know they work really well. So uh, the 61 material seems to work fine, so no worries about that. No need for a capacitor on 6 meters, I believe. So I'm going to uh, put it in the box. Now, of course, this test is not very scientific because we are first, uh, I'm not really uh, at the same height as the antenna. I'm kind of measuring the signal that goes a little bit down and that's not what I really want. Uh, I should have tested that uh, with the antenna a little bit lower and myself a little bit higher on a slope somewhere, but you know, we can't go anywhere with this 10 kilometer limit. So, uh, you know, I just tested it here and that's the way it is. We are vertically polarized on the uh, six, uh, you know, half wave wire. So uh, about 2.85 meter wire and horizontally polarized on that very, very low slung, about a foot and a half from the ground uh, dipole uh, that's hanging there. So, uh, you know, cross polarized. Uh, that's probably, uh, you know, it's, it's probably not good. <laughs> but anyway, the 49 to 1 does get more needle deflection. So that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to put it in the box. And now it's in the box. I was going to use a powdered iron core uh, on top of the ferrites uh, just for, uh, you know, an extra test. But 
it's really not made for that and I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have worked so basically I put in the 49 to 1 with the 61 material toroid and I'll just see how that works. I'm not going to give it the uh, hot glue treatment right away though, <laughs> you never know, it might not work at all, so, I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to work fine, but uh, better not uh, hot glue it first and you know close the box and then realize that it's not working, so uh, let's go up a mountain and check it out. And we are at the uh, Col de Vence uh, once again and uh, everyone is installing, uh, well has installed their gear. Antennas everywhere. Here's my table. I do have the uh, PS, PRC uh, 351 here with the transformer, which I'm going to analyze. Antenna analyzer and the whip, about 2.8 meters, I believe. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind that. I just wanted to uh, show you around the, the, the setting where we were. Uh, this is the first graph uh, SWR plot of the antenna installed on the PRC351 with the transformer, the 49 to 1. And it's rather puzzling because <laughs> the SWR is very high and the antenna seems to be resonant on 47.5 MHz which it wasn't before and the SWR was good so I, I just don't understand what's going on here. So I put the analyzer on 47500 and remember the SWR was about 4 to 1 but I decided to take one turn off just you know remove one turn out of the toroid and guess what happened 3.1 to 1 so I just kept removing turns and here's what happened. 1.7 to 1, so that's pretty darn good. I don't think I can get it much lower than that. Anyway, it's close enough. But the point here on the Smith chart isn't really where it should be. Now, I'm not an expert on the th Smith charts, but I, I just know enough to know that <laughs> it shouldn't be there. It should be on the uh, horizontal uh, line in the middle. Uh, I know the antenna is about a half wave, so you know, I'm going to get good radiation. I'm not worried about that. And you know, it's a military radio, so a little bit of SWR is not going to harm it at all. So I think I'm just going to leave it there. I ended up removing a lot of turns. And at the end, I had two turns primary, <laughs> seven turns total. That's half of the uh, previous amount of turns. I had two primary, 14 totals. Now I have two primary, 7 total. But the frequency magically moved up to exactly 51.5 megahertz. And I didn't plan that, but that's, <laughs> that's the frequency I'm using. And it's just, it's just plain dumb luck, I guess. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. Oui, merci beaucoup Roland. Hein. Oh, bah, je pense que c'est en essayant qu'on qu va un peu... On ne sait jamais, hein. il suffit que quelqu'un euh, euh, regarde la bande des 6 mètres et puis euh, décide de faire un petit tour de roulette ou alors voit le, sur sa euh, waterfall là. Comment on dit déjà le, la chute d'eau là <rire> en français euh, On ne sait jamais, hein on ne sait jamais. Je crois que je devrais simplement appeler plus souvent et puis c'est tout quoi. Voilà, ben bah, un excellent, euh, un excellent week-end hein et puis ben bah, euh, à une prochaine fois je, certainement. Hein et merci encore hein, Roland. 
Allez, une excellente journée. De F4, euh, Whisky, bravo Yankee. A bientôt. A bientôt. Journée Gilles, 73, Gilles. Merci encore. As you can see here, it doesn't look at all like the way it did when I started. That's a much lower amount of turns. But the only thing that matters to me is that it works. Let's make sure that this thing doesn't move. That should do it. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Why did I get such a different result than using a 4921 with a wire? I suspect that the proximity of the radio's case is the culprit. Also, the antenna is a tube, not a wire. So it probably has a lower impedance, but not that low. Is it because I'm not using a long coax cable? It shouldn't matter because a half-wave wire causes very little current on the uh, coax shield. So the fact that the toroid is pretty much mounted on the case might be it. Anyway, it does work fine and that's what I was uh, aiming for, so I'm not going to investigate any further. Now I have a very compact system that can be set up in a matter of seconds. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Have a good one!